You're listening. You're listening to GoAZCats.com today. A podcast all about your Arizona Wildcats. Featuring the latest news and analysis from the staff at GoAZCats.com. Now, straight from the old Pueblo, Tucson, Arizona. Here's the host of GoAZCats.com today, Matt Moreno. Hey everybody, welcome to the GoAZCats.com Today podcast. We're here on location outside of McHale Center, outside of Arizona's practice field, the Dick Tomey practice field. Arizona Stadium's over here. Uh, if you guys listen and hear things behind us, we apologize, we're outside. What can we do? There's a lot of noise going on here on campus. But this is the GoAZCats.com Today podcast. Matt Moreno here with Troy Hutchison, staff writer at GoAZCats.com. Uh, I'm going to turn things over to Troy because I'm terrible at hosting duties. I know the intro said I'm the host, but Troy's really the host here. Uh, so, Troy, let's get us going. Yeah, let's uh, talk about Saturday's game, Arizona versus San Diego State. Uh, like we were saying in our preview show, everybody picked uh, Arizona to win the game, and I had a bad feeling when Arizona is picked fully, and it held true. Arizona lost 38-14. to 14. Uh, the game wasn't really even relatively that close in the score. At one point, it was 38 to 7, 21 nothing. Aztecs to open up the game. Uh, it's just a steamroll effect for Arizona from the get-go. Yeah, I mean, I was really surprised, and maybe I shouldn't be. I mean, I know when people ask me, I did, I did a bunch of podcasts, a bunch of different radio shows before the season. I was pretty steady in my thought process of kind of siding with Vegas before the season. I think Vegas had at two and a half games that Arizona was going to win this season. To me, it felt pretty right on. Um, I've been saying three pretty consistently uh, everywhere I went. I could maybe be talked into four before the season after seeing this team throughout training camp, uh, seeing this team throughout the spring. But to me, the talent isn't that much better. Um, I know people saw what they did in the transfer portal and assumed, you know, transfer portal equals more talent. Sometimes that's just not the case. And, and um, I think we saw that Saturday night. I just don't think the team is up to par in terms of talent level. And Jed Fish can't say that. He's not going to say that. He's proven himself to be the positive guy and the guy that's going to, you know, talk about his team after they lost to BYU. He said, I love my team. Yeah. I love this team. And so he's not going to be the one to say, hey, there's a talent problem here. But it really feels like there's a talent problem here in Tucson with the football team. And I think that showed against San Diego State. Um, they weren't ready, which is on the coaching staff. I mean, they weren't prepared. There were things that were definitely on the coaching staff in that game. Um, you know, Gunnar Cruz had his issues. The team was just not ready to go, and in the end, that falls on Jet Fish. Yeah, you know, and before the season, we talked about our predictions all year long, and I was at that four to five range, leaning more towards five. And frankly, I, I, I would have to say I was wrong. I, I, I don't see five wins on the schedule right now. Uh, the talent level, like you were saying, isn't up to par for Arizona, but I think what sticks out the most, especially in that San Diego State game, is the offensive line has struggled, and it is struggling mightily. Uh, BYU gave up four sacks. San Diego State gave up four sacks. So that's a total of eight sacks. Some of that's on Gunnar Cruz because he doesn't release the football in time. But then again, you you got to block for your quarterback. And when you're doing play-action passes and you have a guy right in your face right as you know you turn around, you're, you're not going to deliver the football. Uh, secondly, offensive run in terms of running the ball, the push on the offensive line hasn't been there. They've been closing gaps quick. Uh, defenses against Arizona. We saw it against BYU where you see this massive hole all of a sudden goes, it's gone. It's shrunk. Uh, same thing happened against San Diego State. And you're talking about a 3-3-5 defense, which Arizona fans are familiar with. And generally, you should be able to run the football against that right down the middle. Uh, credit San Diego State. Arizona was not able to do that. But uh, let, let's talk about Gunnar Cruz. I think that's the main topic of conversation because we all saw the struggles week one against BYU, being able to read an, read a defense, scan the field and make quick timing decisions. It was even heightened against San Diego State and it resulted into him getting pulled near the end of the game. Yeah, I mean, that was worst case scenario. I think we saw Saturday night, yeah. you had an offensive line that is letting too many guys through. You have a quarterback that's holding the ball too long. There is, I went back through some of the film, maybe Klonowski who was on the field, our, our uh, reporter here with GoEasyCats.com was on the field, got some good B-roll of a lot of different things throughout the game. And I was you know, reviewing it to post a video on the site. And one of the things I noticed was you could see many occasions where Gunnar Cruz is double clutching, where he looks to throw the ball and then he just pulls it back in and then it leads to a sack, leads to an incompletion. There were a lot of instances like that when I went back and you know, watched what she was able to shoot on the field. 
um, you know, we have a different view. Obviously, you can kind of see those things from the press box, but we're, we're pretty high up in the air. So when you can really kind of dissect things from that game film from the field, you could really see uh, the issues that Gunnar Cruz was having, holding on to the ball too long, just really indecisive, and maybe wor the worst we've seen him since he's arrived. Yeah. Um, he's had those issues going back to spring ball, definitely showed up during training camp. That was the one thing that really stood out was, you know, his just indecisiveness, unwillingness to get rid of the ball. Um, I, I think there's just a little bit of a fear of making the wrong play with him. That's what it feels like. I mean, that's what kind of leads to those things. Um, yeah, maybe he's not seeing the field as well, uh, not going through all of his progressions, but I think it all stems from just a, a, a fear of, you know, turning the ball over because what he does is not turn the ball over. I mean, that's what he has, you know, proven that he's been able to do throughout, you know, the spring training camp, he doesn't turn the ball over. And so I think it all kind of stems from that. But right now, it's just not good when you have a shaky offensive line. Yeah, no, shaky offensive line, um, hesitant to throw, which is funny because his name's Gunner. You would expect, expect him to sling the ball around, but he's hesitant in the throw. And yes, he hasn't turned the ball over, but you're talking about eight sacks, seven credit to him, one to Will Plummer there. Eight sacks for two games that that can't happen for the offensive line but let's shift our attention to the defense because san diego state was able to exploit arizona's defense in the run game in the passing game especially in that first half uh brookshire for san diego state who last week the well the previous week against new mexico state threw for 115 total yards with two uh no one pick and two sacks going seven for 20. he was able to throw for that in midway through the second quarter going seven for seven. I mean, he looked good. It, depending on who you went to, what side you went to, that 115 was being generous because there were yeah. places that had him thrown for 76 yards. <laughs> so I, I don't know why there are so many discrepancies in the amount of total yards for, for San Diego State in that first game against New, Me New Mexico State. Maybe people weren't awake to watch it. The stat keepers fell asleep. I don't know. <laughs> but it, there was a discrepancy. No matter what, it wasn't good. It wasn't what they showed Saturday night against Arizona. No. Um, and so it was one of those things where he said they, they knew what to do, where Arizona should have been prepared. And this was my thought late in the week. We, we did all of our preview shows. We listened to everybody. And I, and I said, you know, probably about Friday, I said, they're going to come out and pass it because all we've been talking about is run game, run game, run game, run game, run game. Don Brown, you got to stop the run. Everybody, you got to stop the run. It's all, that was all the talk last week because you have to stop the run. It makes perfect sense to go, hey, let's pass it a little bit. And so I think that's what San Diego State did. They said, we're going to try it. It didn't work out last week against New Mexico State, but hey, let's, let's throw the ball around a little bit. And, it, and it, they had success. Arizona ran into all kinds of issues, and it just was problems all night for Arizona. And I think the scary thing for Arizona's defense, it wasn't like it was 50 yards downfield. The play resulted in 70-something yards sometimes, but it was quick screens to the tight ends. It was quick outs, and they were missing tackles where they were able to cut up field. And if you're not making tackles against teams like that, it's going to cost you in the long run. To me, the one thing that you can't make, it's, it's too difficult to say you can make generaliz generalizations about a team one game in. Mm -hmm. Two games in, it becomes a little bit more, hey, this is what they are. We'll know, you know within the next couple of weeks what type of team Arizona has. Defensively, to me, and you heard it talked about the last couple of weeks, the explosive plays mm -hmm. are going to be dangerous for this team all season long. Uh, Don Brown, we were talking to him last week, he said if you take those explosive plays out, and he mentioned you can't, you yeah. can't do that. We know they're there, we know they happen, but if you take those plays out, the defense did a pretty good job. Less so this week, but I still think those explosive plays are the things that got them. I mean, it was those giant, you know, game-changing plays, uh, especially defensively for Arizona, when San Diego State was able to, you know, hit on some deep passes. They had the tight end, who Arizona did a great job of neutralizing the tight end last week um, uh, against BYU. Didn't happen this week, and now you have Arizona missing on some big explosive plays. Created a lot of issues. Yeah, and I think they were able to get things together in the second half. We saw them have, I believe, four straight three and outs uh, defensively, but by that time, it was garbage time. But Will Plummer came in. He was able to lead an offensive drive for a score. Looked a little bit better, but like you talked about, he's not hesitant to throw the football, and maybe that's what this team needs. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was one of those things where there's just a decisiveness. It's kind of, and I said this at the beginning of the season, again, like Don Brown, you can't do this, but if you could somehow combine Gunner Cruz and Will Plummer, yeah. you'd have a really good quarterback. Oh, yeah. You'd have a guy with the size. You'd have a guy with decisiveness. You'd have a guy who can run. You might have you an have, NFL guy. Yeah, you have a guy that can go deep. You'd have one, a perfect quarterback, but yeah. you can't do that. And so you kind of have to pick the best of whatever is having success at that moment. And for Arizona, it's Will Plummer. I mean, he's making things happen. I know Jed Fish, uh, we're recording this on Monday afternoon after Jed Fish's press conference, and uh, he mentioned, I don't want him you know, taking defenders head on. 
yeah. and running right into them because uh, we have video from that sideline. It was rough. It reminded me of <laughs> early Khalil Tate when he yeah. was just afraid, unafraid to you know, go after a, a DB and, and take him head on. And it puts the quarterback in a dangerous position because um, if you lose Will Plummer, your options are Gunnar Cruz and Jordan McLeod, who hasn't played yet. So um, Will Plummer has to stay safe and, and stay healthy. But when you have, and again, to me, this all comes back to the offensive line. It's whoever's going to work behind that offensive line. Gunnar Cruz is not going to work behind that offensive line right now because he is so indecisive. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to throw the ball and get it out in a hurry, you're going to be in some trouble. Will Plummer doesn't have that issue. And if he does, he can get out of the pocket, make some plays with his feet. And so I think that's what gives him the advantage. I think it is Arizona's best option right now because of the offensive line play. But um, I don't know that there's a perfect solution right now, but he definitely, I think, gives them their best chance to win. So we talked about Jed Fish's press conference. Uh, he mentioned that Will Plummer not only is getting the starting job, but Jordan McLeod will be in that backup role, seeing some time. It sounds like Gunnar Cruz went from first to third. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I think it's probably the right move. I mean, at this point, what do you have to lose? I mean, you got to make some kind of decision to get things going. Things haven't been going good. I know Jed Fish talked about it, and he said he didn't feel like it was a step back against San Diego State. To me, it felt like a step back. Uh, so I think for Arizona, you have to figure out, you know, what's our solution? How do we go about winning football games, having a better performance on offense? Because as much as, you know, you can blame the defense for different things, the offense has been what's lagging so far this season. And that's Jed Fish's side of the ball. He calls the plays, he gets that group ready, and they haven't been producing. And so for him, there's a lot of things that he has to take into consideration. I think for Arizona, giving Jordan McLeod a chance isn't a bad thing. And obviously, I think the hope there Jed Fish didn't say this, but I think, you know, quietly you're probably thinking, well, let's f light a fire under Gunnar Cruz. And if you say, you know, Jordan McLeod's going to get some options, that means Gunnar Cruz isn't as much in your favor, mm -hmm. whether he ends up being the true number three guy this week or not. But if Jordan McLeod's going to get some opportunity, he's taking some away from Gunnar Cruz, no matter how you cut that. And so um, maybe he does some things. Maybe he takes that chance. And, you know, I felt like he kind of needed another month or two to kind of get ready and, and learn the system a little bit more before, uh, taking, you know, being able to take the field. And so maybe he's learned some things over the last few weeks and um, can, can make an impact. To me, it feels like he's the new Will Plummer, quote unquote, um, the, the new guy that's going to come in, maybe have a couple plays. You can design a couple packages for him to come in in certain points of the game. Um, against NAU, you're going to have those opportunities, you think. I think. You, you would assume so. I would hope so. But uh, I, I think he'll have some chances to kind of do some different things. And he should get a chance to play. I think that's the other thing. You go back to what I was talking about in the first week going into the opener, and it felt like Jeff Fish just said, I've seen what they can do in practice. Obviously wasn't overly impressed to name one starting quarterback, although he kind of did uh, with Gunnar Cruz. But I, I think it comes back to, I want to see what these guys can do in a game. At this point, I think you kind of have to see what Jordan McLeod can do in a game because mm -hmm. you don't know. Yes, you can watch the game film, different circumstances from here in USF. I mean, you had a different team, different teammates here, different system, so many things that are just changed from where he was at last that you have to see what he looks like, I think, in a game for you here at Arizona. He is the most experienced guy on this team at the quarterback position. So I don't think it hurts to get him out there, see what he can do against a team like NAU. Again, you'd hope it's a little bit of an easier task, maybe uh, you know, a lot less trickery going on, less things he has to process, and you can just kind of see how he, how he handles it. And so um, I do think he ends up playing this weekend. I think Will Plummer takes a lot of the snaps. I don't think we see Gunnar Cruz. So, so much for my prediction last week saying that the competition is over. <laughs> Apparently it's not over. You know, now he'll have to kind of re regather himself and see where things go from here. But it's not a great situation at quarterback for Arizona right now. Although I think, honestly, Will Plummer probably would have been my pick coming out of camp. I like what he does. Uh, yes, he's going to take some chances, probably going to have some turnovers. But going back to explosive plays, I think he gives you your best opportunity to have those as an offense at Arizona. Yeah, I think this is the perfect week for Arizona to test that out, you would assume, with NAU. Uh, maybe change up some things, give uh, Will some different looks out there. But Jed also mentioned that the offensive line uh, at the end of the San Diego State game was banged up with uh, Jordan Morgan, uh, Donovan Lai. You know, those guys were out. But he also mentioned in the press conference that they should be good to go uh, this upcoming week, that they're going to reevaluate that. But you look at that line, when, when, when is the time to make changes? That's a good question. I don't always believe Jed Fish when he says those things. But yeah. I mean, he said Jamari Joyner was going to be ready to go. So I think there's a little bit of, hey, yeah, everybody will be ready to go, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you have to believe him, take, for, take, you know, take him for his word at this point and believe that those guys are all going to be healthy and that they're going to have everybody available. But something has to be done. I mean, I, the, the difficult part, and, and it was asked of me this last week, is this the best they have? 
Is this the best offensive line group that they have? Unfortunately, it is. Yeah. I mean, I think we've seen pretty much everybody throughout camp. The group is just not that strong. And I think there are some good young players. JT Han is a good young player. Um, there's a couple good young offensive linemen, but to me, it's such a difficult position to play. They just don't feel ready. Mm -hmm. And so they're probably a couple years away from really being true you know, contributors. Maybe JT Han can get in, some game, get in some games and do some things. But to me, it feels like they're still a while away from truly being those guys that they need that are going to be solid up front. And there's some holes. I, I think the misstep for me for Arizona this offseason, and they, I think they tried. I don't think they just overlooked it. But you had to be aggressive in getting offensive linemen to come here in the transfer portal. And they just didn't do that. Um, so far, they haven't really done a ton recruiting-wise on the offensive line. Probably going to have to hit the transfer portal again really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And try and find impact players, not just find guys that you can plug in. And, and are, you know, that you say, I think they can do things and fit into a rotation. You need guys that are going to be, you know, the lockdown guys on your offensive line, the stars of your offensive line. You can't mess around with guys who maybe didn't have so much luck at their last stop. You need guys that are ready to go. And so that's going to be the task for Brendan Carroll for this offensive staff is to really find offensive linemen who are ready to go right away next season because, unfortunately, this is what the best that Arizona has right now. Maybe there's some different combinations that work. Maybe you try some different guys. Edgar, Edgar Barola is someone that has been talked about a lot, got to play in the last game. Maybe you get him in there some more. But there's a lot of issues with that offensive line, and to me, they don't feel like they're getting any better. Yeah, no, it's uh, definitely uh, a weakness of Arizona is in the trenches at the offensive line position. Defense line, I thought, had good moments last week. Uh, we saw a drive where they had two sacks. They were able to get to the quarterback. Uh, so I think the defense line's coming around a little bit better, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think there's just more of a rotation there. I mean, we knew there would be depth, and I think that's starting to show a little bit more. Modiello got in the game a little bit more this last game. Um, I like what they do there. They just need to make a bigger impact. You just need to, yeah. I thought Jalen Harris would have a lot better start to the season than he's had. Um, J.B. Brown obviously missed some time during camp. I think he's still kind of trying to gather himself and, and kind of get back into the swing of things. Keen Bars has been pretty good so far, um, coming off injury himself. Uh, Trayvon Mason has been pretty solid. I think he's probably been the highlight of that defensive line. I think the two inside guys, him, Trayvon Mason and Bars, have both been really good, I thought, the first couple games. Um, but I, I think I want to see them expand a little bit more. I think overall, I think that's kind of a theme, is you want to see Arizona get some more guys on the field. Yeah. They haven't really gone very deep with the receiver rotation. Um, really any position offensively they haven't really gone very deep defensively they stuck to a pretty strict plan so i think for them maybe jeff fish has that idea of hey i only have a 53-man roster still i'm still in the nfl i can only play so many guys but um i think it'll be beneficial for them if they expand you know the rotations a little bit let some more guys play especially in a game like this against nau again you think it's going to be a little bit of a lesser opponent you should have an opportunity to win this game if you don't, we'll be talking about a lot of different things next week. But um, you should have some opportunities for guys to get in the game. And I think you have to just to prepare for the rest of the season, get those guys ready, and just get some more contributions because so far it just hasn't been a good look. Um, I thought they took a step back. And, and, but I think defensive line-wise, I, I like the progress. Still want to see more production from that group, though. Yeah, you know, I think Arizona has to look at this as kind of like a baseball mentality right now. And, terms of when you're at the end of the year and you're a bad team in baseball, you see a lot of guys get called up. You see a lot of prospects get called up, different lineups changing in and out, just seeing, hey, what do we have? What do we got there? Right now, this isn't working. BYU, you lost, get embarrassed against San Diego State in your home opener. Uh, it's time to start changing things up and seeing what you got behind some guys. Because, I mean, we've mentioned it before, some guys are practice players, some guys aren't practice players, where they shine in game situations. Why not figure out what you have behind some guys and expand your roster? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's one of those situations where you know what's coming up down the road. This is your last week to kind of play with things because after that, you, you, don't, you don't start Pac-12 play with an easy team. Uh, it's been an interesting Pac-12 season already. You don't know who's going to be good and who's going to be bad and who's going to show up week to week. <laughs> uh, I think it's one of those things where you just don't know week to week. So you, you don't know how Oregon you know, shows up in, in mm -hmm. the Pac-12 opener, but... Oregon is not, they're, they're looking like a team that is not going to be easy to beat, easy right. to contend with. And you're talking about being embarrassed. That could be an embarrassing game if Arizona is not ready to play. So this is kind of your last week to kind of mess with some things, try some different things out, which is why I think there isn't that hesitation from Jed Fish to, you know, throw Will Plummer out there as a starting quarterback because you need to see what you have. You need, to, you need things to be decided by the time Oregon, the Oregon game arrives. You just have to. Yeah. Um, you need to figure out what you're going to do at that point. You need to figure out who's going to play because... Um, it's going to get difficult after that. You get UCLA right after that, and then you know you're into the Pac-12 season, and there's not a whole lot of let up. Even you know a team like Colorado almost knocks off Texas A&M. 
not going to be a team that you can necessarily knock over. And so Arizona has to approach this, this season like every, they're going to be the underdog the rest of the season now. Maybe not this week, but you know, once the Pac-12 season begins, they're going to be the underdog every week. I don't think anybody's going to expect them to win any games in the Pac-12. Um, right now, I don't know that you can blame anybody for thinking that, the way Arizona's played so far, a 14-game losing streak. So um, this is kind of your week to play with some things, try some different guys out. I do expect that we'll see you know, some guys maybe we haven't seen yet at some different positions. Maybe they do mess with that offensive line a little bit, mm. try some different combinations, see what works. Um, they need to keep the quarterback clean. Quarterback needs to make some quick decisions, but um, I think this is the week we'll see some different guys, some different faces in there, try some different things to see what works and what doesn't because you need to be ready for that next, that next week. Yeah, this is definitely the last week for Arizona to get all the kinks out and, you know, just get that trial run done uh, headed before heading into Pac-12 play against an Oregon team that just came off of an upset win over Ohio State. But uh, we'll be back with more. Uh, be sure to check out our, our Arizona football preview show with Joe Tafoya coming soon. Thank you.